Hello. Our topic today is about the transport throughout the cell membrane. You know that different substances can pass throughout the cell membrane and other substances and ions or molecules cannot pass throughout the cell membrane. Why is that? This is because of the nature of the cell membrane which is semi-permeable and also because the size or structure of the molecules or ions themselves for example the charge of ions or molecules so some of these substances ions or molecules can pass throughout the cell membrane but others cannot pass throughout the cell membrane so there must be specific mechanisms specific mechanisms uh, throughout which these substances or ions can pass throughout the cell membrane into the inside of the cell or from inside of the cell to outside of the cell so let's suppose together <coughs> that here is a cell here is the inside and here is outside of the cell so we have different mechanisms throughout which the molecules the substances can pass from outside to inside of the cell and vice versa from inside to outside of the cell from these mechanisms is the passive transport the passive transport passive transport has four major types or there are four major types of passive transport first of all the simple diffusion The second is facilitated diffusion. The filtration. And osmosis. So first of all, why the passive transport is called like that? Why it is passive? Because throughout all these types of transport of molecules or substances or ions, there is no direct consuming or expenditure of energy from the cell. Throughout the transport of substances by these mechanisms, there is no consuming of energy directly from the cell so for the simple diffusion for example the simple diffusion of substances depends largely sorry depends largely about the concentration of the substances for example let's speak about the sodium So let's suppose together that sodium ion concentration outside the cell is high concentration of sodium ion. So sodium will diffuse from outside of the cell or the semi-permeable membrane of the cell to inside of the cell depending upon the concentration of sodium which is high outside the cell and the sodium will move to inside because we have said that the concentration of sodium inside the cell is low so the movement of ions or molecules from area of high concentration to area of low concentration is called passive diffusion depending upon the differences between the concentration of substances in two ways 
when moving throughout semi-permeable membrane. And also, the movement of ions or molecules depends not only about or upon the concentration of ion, but also about the permeability nature of the membrane itself. You know that some membranes are very permeable, very permeable, and others are very impermeable, depending upon the nature of the cell membrane itself, whether it is porous, whether the concentration of lipids or protein, and so on. So, the passive diffusion, passive transport, sorry, includes simple diffusion, and simple diffusion can be defined as the movement of ions or molecules from concentration of high into to low area of concentration of that substance or ion without, without consuming or expenditure of energy from the cell. The other type of passive transport is the facilitated diffusion. Facilitated diffusion is also passive diffusion, but here there must be specific carrier protein to the substance which is need to be transported. We have spoken in the past lecture about the proteins in the cell membrane and we have said that some proteins, some of the integral proteins act as carrier for substances. So for example, this is a specific carrier protein and it is integral protein which is embedded inside the cell membrane. So for a substance, for example here, for example, the sodium ion. Sodium must be bound with this protein and it will be transported to the inside of the cell by the help of this specific carrier protein. Carrier protein. And we have to note that, that also, in terms of facilitated diffusion, there is no consuming or expenditure of energy from the cell. There is no expenditure of ATV, adenosine triphosphate. But the transport of the sodium or whatever, or any substance, depends upon the carrier protein, the specific carrier protein, the carrier protein here will act as a vehicle that carry that substance or ion from outside to inside of cell or, or sometimes from inside to outside the cell. In other words, you can consider the carrier protein as a structure that perform a role of forming what? Of forming pores, pores inside the cell membrane. Let's speak now about the other example of the passive diffusion. Passive diffusion. The filtration. Filtration is type of passive diffusion and it occurs, it occurs usually in renal glomeruli and renal uh, nephrons and depend upon the pores on uh, renal tubules on the pores of the glomeruli. Specifically here, let's speak about the osmosis. Focus with me. Osmosis, osmosis is a term which is specifically related to movement of water, to movement of water throughout semi-perineable membrane. Water move 
the water moves from outside to inside of the cells or from inside to outside of the cells depending largely about the concentration of solutes concentration of salt for example for example if there is large concentration of NaCl salt inside the cell here so the water will move by osmosis will move by osmosis to inside of the cell and vice versa vice versa if for example an ACL concentration outside the cell is high so water will move from inside of the cell to outside of the cell by osmosis this is simply the definition of osmosis and by this definition of osmosis there is three types of what of solutions The first type is isotonic solution. The isotonic solution is the solution where the concentration of substances is equal in inside and outside of the semi-permeable membrane and in terms of cells if the cells or the cell sorry is put in isotonic solution so the concentration of solutes or substances in that solution is equal for example here is an ACL concentration for example five percent and here an ACL of concentration 5% also so the movement of water will be equal in each directions so the water will the water will move freely from inside to outside and from outside to inside of the cell in equal movement in equal movement in other words, there will be no, no effect on the cell membrane. The other type of solution is called hypotonic. The hypotonic solution, when the concentration, when it is applied on the cells, it's applied on the cells, hypotonic solution means that the concentration of substances or solutes in that solution is less than concentration of solutes inside the cell. In other words, in our example about NaCl, if concentration of NaCl here is about 1%, you can note here that concentration of sodium, sodium chloride outside the cell is less than that of sodium chloride inside the cell because it is hypotonic solution here hypotonic the concentration of solute of that solution is less than concentration of the solute inside the cell so the movement of water by osmosis will be largely from outside to inside of the cell and this will cause a swelling this will cause swelling of the cell so the cell will swell like that will swell swell and then rupture of the cell
The other type of solutions is hypertonic solution. Hypertonic. Hyper means high. Hyper means high. So, if hypertonic solution is applied on the cells, we have said that the concentration of solutions, solute, sorry, of in that hypertonic solution is higher than the concentration of that solute inside the cell. For example, an ACL concentration here, for example, 10%. So when this solution, the hypertonic solution is applied, the water will move from inside of the cell to outside of the cell following the high concentration of solutes and this will cause shrinkage shrinkage of the cells so the cell will shrink like that the cell will shrink because of the effect of hypertonic solutions 